Hi everyone! In the previous course, we introduced the public network IPv4 over SRV6 TE policy scenario. This scenario helps implement service connectivity between IPv4 islands when edge networks still run IPv4 after the IP backbone network is upgraded to IPv6. However, if some edge networks are upgraded to run IPv6 but the others still run IPv4, PEs can provide the IPv4 and IPv6 dual stack service to carry both IPv4 and IPv6 services using the SRV6 TE policies on the IP backbone network. In this course, we'll focus on the public network IPv6 over SRV6 TE policy scenario and the differences between the two scenarios. The networking solution is similar to that in the public network IPv4 over SRV6 TE policy scenario. P1, the P and the P2 all belong to AS100. A bidirectional SRV6 TE policy needs to be deployed between P1 and P2 to carry public network IPv6 services. The configuration roadmap for this scenario is as follows. First, Enable is is on P1, the P and P2 to achieve basic root reachability. Second, configure an SRV6 TE policy between P1 and P2. The configurations in the first two steps are similar to those in the public network IPv4 over SRV6 TE policy scenario. Third, configure a BGP IPv6 unicast peer relationship between P1 and P2 to advertise routes between R1 and R2. The BGP configuration in this step is slightly different from that in the IPv4 scenario. We'll focus on this part later. The first step involves configuring ESEs to achieve basic route reachability. This is because SRV6 is implemented through ISIS extensions. These devices require similar ISIS configurations, which mainly include global and interface-specific configurations. Next, let's see how to perform basic SRV6 configuration. Involved operations are as follows. First, enable SRV6 globally. Then, configure a source address for SRV6 encapsulation. After that, create a locator and configure an end.x seed in the locator view to represent the adjacency from P1 to the P. After completing the configurations, we need to enable SRV6 in ESEs and configure the device to advertise the corresponding locator route. Moving on, let's look at SRV6 T policy configuration, which mainly involves the following steps. The first step is to run the segment list command to create an explicit path from P1 to P2 and specify each hope. In this example, this address indicates the first hope end.x seed, representing the adjacency from P1 to the P, and this address indicates the second hope end.x seed, representing the adjacency from the P to P2. The next step is to create an SRV6 TE policy whose endpoint is a loopback interface address on P2 and color value is 101. We also need to specify a candidate path in the SRV6 TE policy and configure the path to reference the previously configured segment list. Finally, let's see how to configure BGP. For this step, there are mainly two differences between the IPv6 and IPv4 scenarios. In IPv6 scenario, the eBGP peer relationship between P1 and R1 and that between P2 and R2 need to be configured in the BGP IPv6 unicast address family. In the IPv4 scenario, however, the corresponding configurations need to be performed in the BGP IPv4 unicast address family. This is the first difference. The second difference is that the IPv6 scenario requires end.dt6 seeds to be configured to identify IPv6 network access. However, the IPv4 scenario requires end.dt4 seed to be configured. Note that in this scenario, you are advised to uniformly plan and manually configure root IDs on the entire network. Otherwise, if devices automatically 
uh, generate identical root IDs, a conflict occurs, preventing BGP peer relationships from being established. After completing ant.dt6 seed configuration, check the local seed tables on P1 and P2. The command output shows that the seed type is ant.dt6 in this scenario. In IPv4 scenario, however, the seed type is ant.dt4. Next, let's see how to establish a BGP IPv6 unicast peer relationship between the PEs. Similar to those in the IPv4 scenario, the key configuration steps include adding the seed attribute to roots, configuring root recursion to SRV6 T policies, and enabling the current device to exchange roots with the specified BGP IPv6 unicast peer. The IPv6 scenario requires these key configurations to be performed in the BGP IPv6 unicast address family. In IPv4 scenario, however, the corresponding configurations need to be performed in the BGP IPv4 unicast address family. In addition, you need to run the peer enable command during a BGP IPv6 unicast peer configuration. This is because a device is only enabled to exchange routes with IPv4 unicast peers by default. Next, we need to configure root coloring on the PEs. The key configurations in this scenario are almost the same as those in the IPv4 scenario, except that the BGP IPv6 unicast address family instead of the BGP IPv4 unicast address family is used in the IPv6 scenario. Finally, configure and apply a tunnel policy on the PEs to import public network IPv6 traffic. The key configuration commands are the same as those to be used in the IPv4 scenario. You only need to ensure that the correct BGP address family type is specified. Next, let's look at the BGP update message format in the IPv6 scenario and the format differences between the IPv6 and IPv4 scenarios. We can see that the update message carries multiple path attributes, including extended community attributes that contain the color attribute. These well-known attributes are the same as those in the IPv4 scenario. As for the differences, one difference is that the BGP prefix seed carries an ant.dt6 seed, which is used to indicate IPv6 network access. The other difference is that the address family identifier is IPv6, and IPv6 routes are advertised in the IPv6 scenario. The next hope address of the root is this address. The root prefix is the root prefix sent from R2. Then, let's take a look at the BGP IPv6 routing table on P1. We can see that the next hope information of this address is consistent with that in the BGP update message. The detailed root information shows the color attribute carried by the root. We can also see that SRV6 T policy is displayed as the outbound interface for root recursion. The preferred BGP root enters the IPv6 routing table. As such, we can also see the root of R2 in the IP routing table. According to the root details, we can see that the next hope of the root to R2 is changed to this one, address. And the outbound interface is changed to SRV6 T policy. P1 sends BGP IPv6 routes to R1 through the peer relationship. And the preferred BGP IPv6 route on R1 enters the IPv6 routing table. As such, we can see this route in the IPv6 routing table on R1. If we ping R2 from R1, we can find that the ping is successful. This indicates that the configuration is successful. That's all about the implementation of public network IPv6 over SRV6 TE policy in the control plane. Next, let's look at the packet forwarding process. Let's ping R2 from R1 to simulate packet encapsulation and check the SRV6 TE policy based data encapsulation format. We can see that ICM PV6 encapsulation and then IPv6 encapsulation are performed for the packet sent from R1 in the SRV6 TE policy scenario. After receiving the packet, P1 
performs SRV6 encapsulation, encapsulating the packet with an SRH in which the last seed is the ant.dd6 seed of the public network instance configured on the peer PE. In contrast, the reply packet is transmitted over an SRV6 PE path without carrying any SRH. Public network IPv6 root advertisement is similar to public network IPv4 root advertisement, except that IPv6 routes are advertised in the IPv6 scenario. After that, let's look at the data forwarding process. Taking data forwarding from R1 to R2 as an example, the forwarding process mainly consists of the following steps. First, the original IPv6 packet is sent to P1 through a specified interface. Second, P1 searches the public network IPv6 routing table according to the IPv6 destination address in the packet, and finds the associated ant.dt6 seed. Then P1 encapsulates an SRH and the ant.dt6 seed into the packet. In the forwarding phase, according to the instruction bound to the end.x seed, P1 decrements the SL value by when, changes the destination address to this address, and then forwards the packet through the outbound interface bound to the end.x seed. Third, the P searches the local seed table according to the outer destination address, and finds a matching end.x seed. According to the instruction bound to the end.x seed, the P decrements the SL value by when, changes the destination address to this address, and then forwards the packet through the outbound interface bound to the end.x seed. Fourth, P2 searches the local seed table according to the outer destination address and finds a matching end.dt6 seed. Then P2 removes the IPv6 header, finds a public network instance matching the ant.dt6 seed, and searches the public network IPv6 routing table for packet forwarding. That's all for this course on public network IPv6 over SRV6 TE policy. Thank you for watching.